My name is Kartik, and I was pursuing a bachelor's degree in Bangalore at the time of this incident, which had the potential to completely alter my life. I was an excellent understudy, and was likewise dynamic in all exercises imaginable from co-curricular to extracurricular. I had a lot of friends and was very friendly. Among that large number of companions, Kavya was my dearest companion since school days. We know one another all around well and are exceptionally near one another, such a lot of that a large portion of my companions thought she was my sweetheart. I didn't have that intention at the time, so I didn't take those comments too seriously. Kavya was an actress who also studied drama. I was happy to be her best friend because she was such a beautiful young woman. It was our mid-year occasions and we went to our home. Kavya used to live in Mumbai but moved to Kolkata due to her father's job, whereas I was born and raised there. Her parents went out of town one day to attend a wedding, and she had to stay behind because of the drama she was in. She inquired as to whether I could come and visit her and remain at her place till her folks are back. I was having my days off thus. I chose to go. Just as her parents had left the house, I arrived. She was the only person here I knew since I was born and raised in Mumbai. She welcomed a portion of her different companions, and we were having a truly great time playing some pre-packaged games, and later we began cooking for the evening. I must confess that I am an excellent cook. We were the only people there when her friends left for home after we ate. I went out to get some frozen yogurt for ourselves, and I went out. When I got back, I saw how worried she was and how close she was to crying. I inquired of her as I was unable to comprehend what was going on. She said that she got a call from her dad expressing that because of weighty downpours, the flight got postponed by a couple of hours, and presently they dropped the flight and they were returning home. Her home was exceptionally near the air terminal, and it doesn't require over 10 minutes to come from the air terminal. She claimed to have received the call almost 10 minutes later, but I didn't have my phone with me, so she wasn't sure how to tell me. She was truly apprehensive about the outcomes in the event that her folks saw them together. Even though they were aware that we were good friends, they were very strict and wouldn't let us hang out alone. I said I will leave right away, yet she expressed that there was not sufficient opportunity to pack and leave, and they will be here any second and more over the standard garments which I wore when I came here went for washing, and I was in my shorts for the evening and it is absolutely impossible that you can take those, and I couldn't in fact conceal them from guardians once the washer gets them back. I started to panic when I heard this. In the meantime, we heard a vehicle halting before the house, and to our shock, it was her folks. In an unconstrained choice, I chose to conceal under her bed. She met her folks outside and let them know that she welcomed her companion who planned to come tomorrow, since she thought they wouldn't be here. They entered their bedroom after declaring that was okay. She was once more into the room and was a peace quiet after the entire episode. I was pleased that nothing significant transpired. She jumped to her feet and yelled, You can be my girlfriend! When I inquired about what had transpired. When I asked her what she meant by her statement, I was perplexed. She replied that she would dress me up as a girl because she had told her parents that one of her friends would be staying with her tomorrow. I have no one else to talk to and nowhere to go, so I can't leave. My train only leaves in two days. It was after quite a while that we met, and she didn't believe I should leave, and even I would have rather not gone. The suggestion surprised me, and the strategy didn't really interest me. She mentioned a great deal, and let me know that it was the main way we can invest some energy. Since I thought there was no mischief in doing so, I acknowledged her solicitation. She was in the theater, so it wasn't hard for her to get the things she needed for the makeover because she already had them in her room. In this way, the course of orientation change began once again night. She requested that I eliminate the hair from my arms and legs. Since I don't have a mustache or beard, my face wasn't a problem. I did what she said. Bra asked me to put on one of her pants after she gave me one. I declined, stating that no one would check to see if I was wearing them inside. She demanded so acknowledged to wear them. She helped me put on the bra because I just couldn't get it on. The two of them were an ideal fit, and the undies was a truly smooth, and the perfection showed its impact on my part. 
Kavya saw it and said, You will be a young lady, and a young lady doesn't have a projecting chamber from her thigh region, so keep a hang on your ponies. Her words made me feel a little embarrassed, but I realized it was true. She gave me a nightgown because it was nighttime, but she didn't put on any makeup. That can be done tomorrow morning. She was laughing so hard at me that I felt like a boy in the dress at that moment. She woke me up early the following morning and informed me that there was a lot to do. She wanted me to get a bath and put on a bra and pantyhose once more. I did what she said. She provided me with a salwar kameez to wear this time. I could easily wear it, and it wasn't a big deal. She started applying some makeup to my face, going so far as to apply lipstick and mascara. She fixed me with a wig and some fake boobs from her theater kit. She plaited the hair and fixed a few pins with the goal that it stays ready. She adjusted the fake boobs so that they looked right after inserting them into my bra. She then covered them with a dupata and asked me to always cover my boobs carefully. I proceeded to investigate myself in the mirror, and I just couldn't accept the obvious reality. I loved how I looked and thought I was stunning. I was actually really taken aback by the looks because my dupata fell from my shoulder and I could see my boobs. I began altering my dupata. Kavya was overjoyed and laughing when she saw everything, so she came over and gave me a kiss and a behind-the-back hug, telling me that I was wonderful. She playfully squeezed my boobs and said that they were bigger than her. It was time to leave, so I let her go. I had no choice but to meet her parents, despite my fear. When I left the room, I ran into her mother. She didn't get uncertainty, and she grinned and began talking. After some time, I felt calm and decided to cool down. I found out that her father wasn't at the house. Her mother asked us to dress in a half sari and informed us that we were going to the temple after some time had passed. When I first heard this, I was dumbfounded. I told Kavya that I couldn't, and I went back into the room. She said that she will be careful, and I was overseeing all around well, and there was no point in getting apprehensive. I was forced to do it because she persuaded me to do so. She gave me a blouse to wear after taking off my salwar kameez. She assisted me in putting it on because I had no idea how to do it. She provided me with a petticoat and a royal blue lehenga to wear, and she began draping a red chuni like a sari. She added flowers to my hair and repleated it. She asked me to look in the mirror and gave me more bangles. I did likewise, and this time I was multiple times more lovely than I was previously. Indeed, even Kavya enjoyed me a ton and remarked that I was more lovely than her. We had an extraordinary day outside with her mom, and we returned exclusively at around eight in the evening. Kavya's behavior changed during the trip, I observed. She was holding my hand constantly, and she began acting as though she was with a genuine young lady in any event, when her mom wasn't anywhere near. I made the decision to discuss that with her. When I asked her about her behavior, I heard words I never expected to hear from her. She claimed that while she was in theater, she noticed a lot of boys acting as girls in plays and began to like them. She also said that she was really taken aback by my beauty when she saw me in a girl's dress and couldn't take it any longer. After that, she got close to me, took my hand, and told me, I love you, Kartik, but I love you more when you are a girl. I can't have a preferable companion over you even in young ladies, and I can't simply relinquish you nor your young lady side. I'm truly infatuated with you and more with your young lady character. I simply did not know how to respond. She got even closer to me and began to kiss my lips. There was a ton going to me, and I was unable to consider anything and let her keep on kissing me. She began to get her hands over my hip, and gradually she got them over my boobs. She began to squeeze my boobies. She informed me that she is fine with me being a lesbian. The events that were taking place completely overwhelmed me. I let everything happen because her feelings were stronger than mine. As soon as I started responding to her advances, we became two girls kissing and cuddling. We were all over each other throughout the entire night, and it was a wonderful night. The following day, I needed to leave as a result of my train, yet these gatherings continued forever. We tied the knot in a traditional manner two years later and went on an unconventional honeymoon because we were two girls. So now, the story ends here. And tell me what are your thoughts. Write them below. And thanks for watching.